Welcome to a screencast of the new data site GraphQL API that we are releasing today as a pre-release version. My name is Martin Fenner and I'm the data site technical director. Before we can go through some examples using the GraphQL API, we need to have a GraphQL client installed. And what you can see here is the popular GraphQL client. And we use the URL that you show here, which is the same URL for all GraphQL queries in the data site system. GraphQL is very different to what we all use with REST APIs. So for example, there is only a single URL. It's always the post method, as you can see here. Um, and there are some differences in how the system is set up. Basically, GraphQL is much more standardized than your typical REST API. And that means that we can use a single client application for all GraphQL APIs. What you have, for example, is a built-in documentation that tells you what fields are available. And I want to start with something simple, which is looking up a researcher. And for that, like for every single resource you want to look up, you need an identifier. And of course, that's a persistent identifier. And um, of course, we use ORCID for that. So I'm copy and pasting the ORCID ID of my colleague Robin. And you can see that's not a problem at all for the GraphQL API. What is interesting here is that we actually talk to the ORCID API, meaning this is not information stored in data site, but sits somewhere else. And that's one of the nice features of GraphQL that you can easily integrate APIs sitting in different places. Similarly to looking up a researcher, by his or her ORCID identifier. Of course, we can do the same um, with many other things. And um, the identifier could be a data site DUI. It could also be a Crossware Funder ID. It could be a research organization registry identifier. And um, going forward, we will be have more identifiers and these identifiers identify data sets, publications, researchers, funders, organizations, which are basically the basic building blocks in the PID graph of scholarly outputs that are connected to each other. What we are going to do now is to see whether we can find out more about this particular researcher and we're interested in the publications. And we start a simple query, how many publications linked to this ORCID identifier can we find? And we find 13. This number comes from the data site event data service now, which collects this information from ORCID identifiers found in data site metadata and then sends this information to ORCID in what's called the auto-update workflow. But of course, we want to know more about these publications, not just how many there are, but for example, what is their identifier and what is their title. We can have multiple titles, so we have to 
um, use this syntax here. So now the GraphQL API is actually talking to three different APIs. First, the ORCID API, then the event data service, and finally the data site device API. And we find the information we asked for, which is the DOI and the title. And that's one of the nice features of GraphQL. You can say exactly what you want. You don't get information you don't need and you don't have to do a second API call to get information uh, um, in a different way. And that's a very big difference to REST APIs, which sometimes try to give more flexibility, but usually send you lots of things you don't need and you sometimes still need additional API calls to get what you didn't get with the first call. And this is an example here because we basically talked to just three different APIs. So we can now use all the information that we have in data site metadata and also look that up here. So for example, um, look at related resources to these publications and looking at funding. So now we can see the first publication and maybe what we can do is um, limit the results to make that clearer. So we just want the first three results out of the 13. As you can see here. So the first publication we see there is funding with the funder identifier from Crossref Funder Registry and the award title. And we want to know the funder name as well because that's um, more human readable and it's from the European Commission, the Thor Fund that funded this work, which is part of something else and has different versions, etc. So you can see a lot of information um, and we could go further by linking out using these identifiers here, but that's um, something that we will be building out going forward. As I said, this is the pre-release version of the data site GraphQL API, which will change over the coming months, adding more functionality, more linking, fixing bugs uh, you discover, and uh, also improving performance. So enjoy playing with the API. And if you have any questions, come to the PIT forum where we have a dedicated section to talk about everything related to PitGraph and that includes this uh, data site GraphQL API.